Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers to fit rear distance pads on a 2016 Range Rover Sport. First thing we're going to do, pop the bonnet, release these four clips to gain access to the brake fluid reservoir. So once the four clips are out of the way, you can just remove the plastic panel, put it to one side, and then you can just take the lid off the brake fluid reservoir. If the reservoir is very, very full, you maybe need to draw a bit of fluid off because as we push the pistons back in, the fluid will come back into the reservoir and if it's, if it's too much in there, it'll obviously overflow. So if it is full, just drain a little bit off before we start. Before jacking the vehicle, you need to put it into jacking mode. So make sure all the doors are shut, the hazard lights are on, then you press the um, approach lighting button and unlock button on your fob, hold them both together until the suspension goes into a full height, a beep will come on your dashboard and then that's it, you'll be ready to jack. Done. The Range Rover is fitted with electronic parking brake and it acts directly on the rear brake calipers. So before you start working on the rear brakes, you need to put it into service mode. So if you jump into the car, you turn the ignition on, press and hold the electronic parking brake button for two seconds, then depress the accelerator, wait a further two seconds, turn the ignition off and then back on again immediately and then you'll hear a beep on the dashboard, it'll say it's in service mode, then you can release the parking brake button and carry on with the work. Once we've got the wheel off, we can see the brake caliper, so you'll need a 13mm socket or spanner and a 17mm spanner to hold the slider itself. Just crack both of those undone, and you can just take, take both top and bottom bolts out, then you can put the caliper to just off and we can then just remove the caliper like that then we can get our piston pusher backer tooler put that in place and a ratchet and then wind the piston all the way back in so then we can remove the push tool and then you can push the pads out. Might need a screwdriver to just push those out and we'll see just how low those pads are. Look, as you can see, they're very, very low. So once the pads are out, we'll remove the caliper carrier. Now you'll need for this is a 15 mil double hex socket for the two bolts at the back. They're fairly tight, so once that's off, we'll uh, get on with the disc. So we've got the caliper carrier off now. What we're going to do, just to make sure that it's clean underneath, we'll just remove the stainless steel pads inserts, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then we'll just make sure that underneath those stainless steel inserts that the caliper carrier is all nice and clean and clear. Then we'll copper grease it and refit it. So this is a stainless steel insert I was telling you about, if we move that to one side, we just need to make sure that the parts in the, un underneath there are really, really clean, because what happens is there's a build-up of rust gets underneath there, which pushes up the stainless steel part, which then clamps the pad so they get tight in the caliper carriers. So we yeah, definitely want to clean all these up properly before we refit them. Now we'll use a T50 Torx bit to remove the, the disc retaining bolt. And once that's out of the way, you might just have to get a hammer, just like tap the disc and we can remove it from the hub. We're just going to clean up around the hub. You can use emery cloth or wire brush, whichever you want. So once it's all nice and clean around the stub, if you just get some copper grease, just very lightly put it all the way around. and then we can refit the disc. Before we fit the new disc, just spray it with some brake cleaner. Make sure you clean the surfaces really, really well. Same on the other side. Get them nice and clean. And then we're ready to refit that disc. It's time to pop the new disc back onto the hub and just make sure that you get the uh, hole in the right place for the new 
retaining bolt and this one's talking down to 35 newton meters. The caliper carrier all nicely cleaned up, just make sure the sliders are both nice and free. And then we can place it back in its position, bolt it up, and these two bolts want torquing up to 282 newton meters. Once the caliper carrier is all done and tightened up, just refit the pads, then we can replace the brake caliper and the two brake caliper bolts want to be tightened up to 35 newton meters. Now on the other side is, is, the, um, is pretty much exactly the same as this, bar the fact it's got the warning wire, the sensor wire for the brake pads. So we're just going to show you where that plugs in in a second. It's now time to replace the rear wheel, torque it down to 140 newton meters. Then if you jump in the car, pump the brake pedal till you get a solid pedal again, which means the piston has um, hit, the, hit the pads and, and that's working correctly. And then to take the handbrake out of safety mode is exactly the same procedure as to put it into safety mode. And the, the light will come on the dashboard telling it's out of safety mode or service mode. And then with your rear suspension or your suspension jacking set up, it's exactly the same as as the other as the as the activating it or if you just drive it once it gets over 50 miles an hour 80 k's it'll just revert to its own uh, settings again